So if there are people today who speak Latin, and there are thousands of us, even tens of thousands of us, how do we have words for modern concepts like the internet, electricity, cars, and phones, when these were things that didn't exist in ancient Roman times? Let's answer that question today. I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. The answer to this is actually really simple. Latin has been a spoken language, not just in the times of the ancient Romans, but continuously since at least the inception of Latin literature in the third century BC, the late Old Latin period, with wonderful authors like Plautus and Terence, whose comedies form some of the basis of conversational Latin to this day. From that period through the classical Latin period of the first century BC through the second century AD, the late Latin period that follows, medieval Latin period, Renaissance Latin, all the way up through the modern Latin of the present day, Latin has been spoken by people. Now, it is a dead language, and in my Immortal Language video, I explain how Latin died and became immortal. It's a dead language because there's no community of speakers where Latin is their only language. While there are many thousands of people who are fluent, some people who are even raising their children to speak Latin in addition to a vernacular language, this doesn't completely fulfill the linguistic definition of a living language. In particular because Latin does not evolve. Unlike other languages, which naturally we expect them to have some changes over time, Latin is very fixed in that literature of the classical period, in its basic grammar in particular, and for the most part in its vocabulary. And yet, we can talk about vis electrica and computatorium and teleponum and all these other lovely things that we use every day because there have been people who speak Latin fluently for thousands of years. In medieval and renaissance times, the vast majority of literature and of books, science books, business, technical manuals were all written in Latin. As the vernacular languages, the modern languages as we think of them, Italian and French and Spanish and so forth, they all came into their own and so there was a separation from the need for Latin as the lingua franca, as the international language of Western Europe. And thus, the importance of Latin became reduced, especially when it comes to practical matters of doing business or international relations. But Latin was extremely important all the way up until really a couple hundred years ago, even for international communication. And even after languages such as French, followed by English, came to really become international languages of diplomacy and commerce, Latin continued to be studied and spoken by people all around the world. And the reason that we learn to speak Latin is that to truly know a language, you have to be able to express yourself in it a little bit. If you want to read a language with fluency and really appreciate what you're reading, you have to be able to express yourself at least a little, maybe not with perfect fluency, but the language has to be internalized. And that's why I encourage you to learn Latin. Learn with my LLPSI playlist on my other channel, Scorpio Martianus. Learn with my Patreon-exclusive series about Latin pronunciation and conversation. There's a huge number of resources out there to get really good at Latin, even at speaking it. So if we have words for basically everything in the modern era, from fruits and vegetables that didn't exist in ancient times, all the way to modern concepts of technology, where can we find those things? Well, one of the best resources that I can recommend that I talked about in this video about Latin dictionaries is neolatinlexicon.org. The great David Morgan started putting this together and it's now curated by Patrick Owens. It is incredibly valuable because it has not just the terms but where they come from, different authors that have used them through the centuries. It's amazing. You can use it in different ways, but I definitely recommend going to the Adumbratio because there you can find a specific word searching for English or for Latin and get exactly the thing you might want. In addition to this, you might check out one of the books I'm doing as a live stream series on my other channel, Scorpio Martianus. I'm using the book Conversational Latin for Oral Proficiency by Troutman. And in these live streams, I only speak Latin and I interact directly with the people there who are able to respond to the questions I ask. You should go watch them. You can learn a lot of really useful conversational Latin that way too. There's also the wonderful book Vita Nostra by Stephen Burrard, who's an outstanding author of modern 
20th and 21st century Latin. These and other resources, as I find and collect them, I'll link them in the description so you can find the neologisms that have been invented for Latin. And in reality, especially in the Renaissance, usually certain words that we take for granted today as being part of Western European language vocabulary were actually first invented and used in Latin and then adopted into the modern Western European languages. The word lemon is a great example. It came from Latin first, limo, and was adapted into Italian as limone and as lemon in English. I recommend two videos I did about what is Latin, where I describe in the first video the entire chronology of the Latin language, and in the second one, in part two, I talk about how do we decide which vocabulary term to use. As an example, I talked about the word lemon, because there's also Kitarium. Kitarium is what becomes citron and citrona in German, but we have limone and lemon in English. Now, both these words were in the common spoken Latin of the Middle Ages and Renaissance, and then the different modern languages ended up choosing different Latin words which have become part of the vernacular and standard terms in those languages. So what do we do as Latin speakers? Because our language isn't limited to the 20th and 21st century. It's not limited to living generations. We want to communicate with people from all time as much as possible. Well, that becomes an interesting, somewhat philosophical and at least philological choice. International languages like Spanish and English have huge numbers of native speakers all over the world. And because of that, we have classic examples like, say, European Spanish will say coche for a car, whereas carro is more common in the Americas. And in US English, it's usually a flashlight. And in UK English, it's usually a torch. So those kinds of dichotomies already exist. And for people who learn Spanish or learn English as a second language, well, they have to choose. Do they want to speak more British or more American, more European Spanish, more Latin American Spanish? Or do they want to do a mix? And that ends up being a choice that they philologically, that they linguistically have to make for themselves. This might be comparable to how Spanish-speaking countries can have some very different words for certain things. And I'll just throw some of these on the screen here. And that could cause a little bit of confusion. So as Latin speakers, we have to make choices as well, which meet our needs and our personal linguistic philosophy. This is a question that gets asked a lot in the comments. So instead of trying to respond with a few paragraphs to the next person who asks such a thing, I will give a link to this video should it get asked. And if uh, you who are a subscriber and if you like this video and you see someone ask that question or someone has that question somewhere else on the internet or that you know in person, show them this video so that they know why Latin has the full range of modern vocabulary just as much as any modern language. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing. And thanks most of all to my Patreon supporters. Walete. Thank you.